मिसिस रीना ईसा हमारे साथ होंगी यू डिन एग्री टू गिव दिस इंटरव्यू एट दैट टाइम व्हाई नाउ माय हस्बैंड डिड नॉट वांट मी टू गिव दिस इंटरव्यू ही वाज द कंप्लेनेंट इफ मिस्टर इमरान हैन स्टूड फॉर द प्रिंसिपल ही शुड हैव एडवाइज्ड द प्रेसिडेंट टू फाइल अ रेफरेंस अगेंस्ट हिमसेल्फ रियल ओनर ऑफ द लंदन प्रॉपर्टीज दिस रिमाइंड्स मी ऑफ जस्टिस कोसास मनी अस्सलाम वालेकुम पाकिस्तान की अदालती तारीख का एक अहम मुकदमा जो तकरीबन दो साल तक चलता रहा और इसकी छियासठ से जायद समाप्त हुई जी हाँ मेरी मुराद सुप्रीम कोर्ट के जज जस्टिस काजी फाइजीसा के खिलाफ सदारती रेफरेंस से शुरू होने वाला मुकदमा है इस मुकदमे की समात के दौरान के दौरान सदर ने कई इंटरव्यूज़ दिए वफाकी वजरा ने कई प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस की लेकिन एक शख्सियत जिसने मीडिया के किसी सवाल का एक लफ्ज़ की सूरत में भी कोई जवाब नहीं दिया अब जबकि मुकदमा खत्म हो चुका है तो हमने उनसे रबता किया कि हम उनसे पूछें कि इस मुकदमे की इस समात के दौरान उन पर क्या गुजरी और जब क्योंकि मुकदमा खत्म हो चुका है तो कई सवाल ने जन्म लिया है तो क्या वो हमारे इन सवाल का जवाब देंगी तो इस पर उन्होंने हमारे साथ हामी भरी और आज वही शख्सियत जी यानी जस्टिस काजी फाइजीसा की अहलिया मिसिस रीना ईसा हमारे साथ होंगी उनसे हम कुछ सवाल करेंगे और इस दौरान वीडियो लिंक पर मेरे साथ पाकिस्तान के इंतहाई सीनियर और क्रेडिबल जर्नलिस्ट जो हैं वो भी होंगे जिनमें शामिल हैं जनाब सैद तलत हुसैन साहब जनाब सलीम साफ़ी साहब जनाब वजाहत मसूद साहब और लाहौर से हमारे साथ होंगे इमरान शफकत साहब जी मिसेस सलीम ईसा शुक्रिया आपका अगर मैं ये पूछूं आपसे कि मिसेस सलीम ईसा कौन है क्या आप अपने बारे में हमें कुछ बताना पसंद करेंगे Mr. Siddiqui, I would rather not say. I would rather not talk about myself. What I am is for my family and friends. I'm not a public figure. The only reason, the only reason I am here today facing these cameras, is for my children and my grandchildren. Otherwise, why should I be here? They have hurt me deeply. They have hurt us deeply. Because of this pain, I am here. So now, now something about myself. I started teaching English at the Karachi American School before before I got married, where I taught for decades. I speak English, Urdu, and Spanish, as my mother was Spanish. I will be doing this interview in English because all my filings in court are in English. My father Abdul Haq Khosro is from a village near Chekobad. He had lands in Sindh and Balochistan. My great grandfather built an absolutely beautiful mosque of stone, one of the oldest in the area, demonstrating the excellent quality of stone masonry an icon of our heritage i grew up in karachi studied in the convent school and then the grammar school i was an avid reader and read most of the classics while in school i was good in sports and in most events was part of the school team I learned to sail at a very young age at the Karachi Yacht Club. My sailing teachers were local fishermen from Liari, Baba and Bit Island. Those were good years. I enjoy creative things as well as gardening, especially growing vegetables, reading and doing puzzles. And God has blessed me with three lovely grandchildren. You have been through a lot. Give me a sense of uh, your audience. Hello, Sab. One day I came to the TV room, and I heard the names of my mother and father splashed across national TV. A non-stop verbal artillery fire. The language used was derogatory and painful. Even though my mother had passed a few years before, they shared her name. a national nationality as if there was something significant in that 
but they conveniently forgot to mention that she spent her entire life doing charitable work, helping the poor and needy of Pakistan. They forgot to mention that she had sent hundreds of children to school. My father was diagnosed with cancer. This is the radiology report filed in court. My husband never took more than a month holiday in a year. But because I was all alone at home and had to take care of my father and also of my daughter who was to deliver her child through cesarean section and had a heart condition, he applied for longer leave. But rather than being able to help, Chief Justice Khosa decided to proceed with the reference and did so during the court's holiday. Never before, never before was a reference taken up during court vacation. Khosa Saab was most kind with us. I had the privilege to serve and care for my father till he passed in my arms and I so regret that his last year was spent under such difficult circumstances. I will never forget the 25th of June, 2020, the day he died. Madam, my question is the minority judgment uh, starts uh, with a reference to the Quranic uh, verse about uh, the importance of uh, the truth. Then why did you file a review petition trying to stop a BR from uh, looking into your income and poverty? Salim Sahib. I think you would agree that when the Holy Quran is mentioned, as it was repeatedly in the minority judgment, it should apply to all Muslims. Uh, my husband is the only judge and I the only judge's wife who declared our assets when the Women's Action Forum wrote to the Supreme Court a few years ago. But I'm still waiting for the Honorable Chief Justice Umar Bandiyal and Honorable Justices Muneeb Akhtar Justice Sajad Ali Shah and Justice Kazi Amin who signed this minority judgment to also disclose theirs and their family assets. But the question remains unanswered. Why did you object to the case being sent to the FBR? Talat Saab, with all due respect, the Honorable Justice Umar Bandiyal did so without first granting me a single hearing and told FBR to decide in 90 days while the Honorable Judge himself took 127 days to write his reasons for doing so. Incidentally, I was mentioned 194 times in a case in which I was not a party. FBR sent me nine, nine notices FBR directed by Mr. Ashfaq Ahmed said, I refuse to receive a notice on the 25th of June 2020. And because of my refusal, it was pasted on the gate of my house for the world to see. Here is its photograph. Please see, they opened the envelope and pasted the notices. Can you provide a single example of FBR doing this in any other case? If someone had actually come to deliver it, they would have found out that my father had died on the 25th June, that same day. And his dead body lay in the same house. Now coming to your question, Talat Sahib. FBR may inquire into anyone's income or property, but this power exclusively vests in the FBR. The president cannot do so. 
the Prime Minister cannot do so. And with the greatest of respect, Supreme Court judges cannot do so either. But Madam, what is the harm if they ask you? Mr. Sadiq, I as a teacher know that the laws of a country apply to everyone. But I was singled out. I am grateful to the majority for realizing the error. But with all due respect, the four honorable judges and the minority judgment still maintain they were right in directing FBR. Then, on the same principle of equality, they should have directed FBR to look into the tax affairs and properties of their own wives and children too. Anyways, I made full disclosure to FBR. Even though FBR already, they already knew everything. But what can a poor commissioner of income tax do when hukum upar se aata hai? You're a housewife. The issue is still there, which is unresolved in public mind as to how a housewife amasses enough wealth to buy properties uh, worth millions of pounds in expensive places like London. Talat Saab, let me correct you. The properties were not bought for millions of pounds. Mr. Farooq Naseem, who's unfamiliar with the truth, said that the properties were bought for millions of pounds, when in reality the total cost of all three combined was 751,000 pounds. Approximately the cost of one canal or 500 square yard house in Karachi or Islamabad and bear in mind, when I bought pounds those many years ago, it was much cheaper than it is now in the present state of the economy. And I was not only a housewife. I started working as a teacher before I was married in one of the best schools in Pakistan, the Karachi American School, and was paid a good salary. Then, in addition to my salary income, I had agricultural land in two provinces. I have disclosed their details and provide you a copy. I also had an office in Clifton Trent in Karachi and another property in an expensive residential commercial area of Karachi for which I received rent. These were all disclosed in my income tax returns. My tax matters were handled by one of the most honest and distinguished tax practitioners in Pakistan, the late Mr. Rehan Hassan Nakhli, and after his death, by Ms. Lubna Parvez, who was appointed the first woman judge of the Islamabad High Court. But sadly, she was not confirmed. I hope I was not the cause of it. My first question would be that uh, certain names, uh, Asan Hizri has emerged in that minority judgment. Who is he? Bajahat Saab, decades ago, Essen and my husband set up a law firm by the name of Rizvi Issa and Co. It expanded and took on more partners. Mr. Essen, Zahir Rizvi and my husband set up the culture of law firms in Pakistan. There were old law firms set up by foreigners such as Sarajan Bichina and uh, or Dignam, or there were one-man shows in which one could only progress if one was related to the lawyer who owned the firm, like Anwar Mansoor Khan's father's firm. The other thing that Mr. Ersan Rizvi and my husband did was to pay income tax on all their earnings. They, as young lawyers, they were just then little over 40, were paying more income tax than very senior lawyers like Mr. Sharifuddin Tirzada. Mr. Anwar Mansoor Khan, the former Attorney General, was his protege, and Mr. Farooq Naseem, who joined his father's law firm. My husband's law firm also shared work with other lawyers, which few law firms do. Their firm referred a number of cases to, for example, the Honorable Justice Bandial, as a lawyer, and many more to Mr. Khalid Anwar's firm, where Honorable Justice Munib worked. Uh, 
मिसिस सर लेट्स गो बैक टू योर हस्बैंड एंड द लंडन प्रॉपर्टीज हाउ कैन यू से दे वर नॉट हिज If they were his, why would he not buy them in his own name, Mr. Siddiqui? After all, he was paying a lot of income tax and declaring each rupee he earned. In 2002, the partner in my husband's law firm was acknowledged as being the highest taxpayer in Pakistan in the professional category. Mr. Rizvi's share in the firm was larger than my husband's. and he was awarded the sitara imtiaz for the best taxpayer ab wo sitara imtiaz ki baat kari main aapke liye pad deta hu wo janab ehsan rizvi ek kanuni firm messrs rizvi isa husain ke aham hissedar hain aapki ilan karda amdani aur ada karda tax mein har saal musalsal aur batadreej izafa ho raha hai 2002 aur 2003 ke tashkheesi saal ke dauran aapki ilan karda kul amdani ki maliyat 2 crore 35 lakh rupaye thi और आपने इस पर आयद शुदा टैक्स की पचासी लाख रुपए की रकम बाबा तौर पर अदा की है और इस तरह आप मुल्क के बड़े टैक्स देने वाले बन गए हैं खदमात आमा बेहतरीन टैक्स जिंदा के शुबे में आपकी नुमाया खदमात के तरह में सदर इस्लामी जमहूर पाकिस्तान ने जनाब एहसन जहीर रिजवी को सितारा इम्तियाज का एजाज अदा किया है This distinction of the best taxpayer in the professional category has never before or after been given to any lawyer in Pakistan. Mr. Rizvi's share in the firm was the largest, therefore his income share was the most. After him, it was my husband. When my husband was appointed as Chief Justice of Balochistan on the 5th of August 2009, he had paid more income tax the previous year than his entire next year's salary as chief justice i show you a copy of his income tax return for the year 2009 this is before he became a judge and his and it shows income of over 37 million When he became Chief Justice of Balochistan, his annual income was about 12, 12 times less than what his income was in the previous year. He paid more income tax before he became a judge than his year's total salary after he became a judge. Uh, coming uh, to the reference, uh, who was the complainant? In my application filed in the Supreme Court CMA 7602 this is what I wrote Salim Saab When Mr Doga was asked who he worked for he tauntingly replied I am a tout of ISI Mr Doga was a party and neither he nor anyone from the government side denied what i just read and i think it is common knowledge who back then headed the isi and his close connection with mr imran khan and his role in the phase of our government madam are you making an allegation against the intelligence agencies let me ask you the state question are you alleging isi salim saab no no i am merely citing facts however things appear to have changed in a very short time within the institution since the professional non political general was appointed to head it a stepping back a non involvement on the political front not stifling independent media a distinct lack of seeking attention and a firm resolve to not print photographs with politicians the allegation made against your husband was that he was the real owner of the london properties what do you say imran saab the allegation against my husband kept changing can someone please tell me if the properties were his then why did he not buy them 
in his own name, considering he had more than sufficient tax paid money. And if he wanted to hide them, then why did he not do what Mr. Imran Khan did, conceal them by putting them in the name of an offshore company? As a successful corporate lawyer, he knew how this is done, simply. You state the allegations kept changing. How did they change? Chief Justice Asif Khosa and the other two judges of the Supreme Court on the Supreme Judicial Council, Justice Khosar Ahmed and uh, Justice Asmat Said, never once called my husband to ask or hear him. But they were deeply hurt. Mr. Anwar Mansoor Khan behind my husband's back. On the 29th of May 2019, Chief Justice Asif Said Khosa wrote, and I quote, Let the learned Attorney General for Pakistan appear before the Council on that date and apprise the Council of the specific breach of law and alleged commission of misconduct by the respondent judge. He never answered his own question, Imran Saab. Okay, why did he not answer his own questions? Imran Saab, there was no substance in the reference. And Justice Khosa, Justice Kulsar and Justice Asmat knew this. But the object of the whole exercise was to remove my husband, not to act fairly. Because if they acted fairly, they would have simply dismissed the reference. A bogus concept of money trail was then introduced, of which there is no mention in the income tax ordinance. They must have thought that like many Pakistanis who buy properties abroad, abroad I would have sent money abroad through illegal means. I think it is called Hawala or Hundi. Why would Justice uh, Asif Said Khosa, Justice Azmat Said Sheikh and uh, Justice Gulzar do the government's bidding by introducing the money trail concept? You should ask them really. I can only speculate. Azmat Saab, well, everyone knows where his loyalty lay. Was he not appointed on the board of governors of Mr. Imran Khan's Shokat Khanam Memorial Trust immediately after his retirement and then chosen by Mr. Imran Khan in the broadsheet inquiry even though he was a NAB employee at the time when the scandal happened, Mr. Siddiqui? And then there is someone who wants extraordinary security in retirement. Is his conscience not clear? Mrs. I, did you send money abroad illegally through Habala or uh, Hundi? Mr. Siddiqui, I did not. Do you have any proof of this? Mr. Siddiqui, this was even acknowledged by the commissioner selected by the government at page 157 of his 164 page order. Here, let me read. In response, the documentary evidence submitted by the bank revealed that foreign exchange to the tune of 737,503 pounds and $17,966 was remitted out by the taxpayer. But he may have favored you. Where is the proof? Mr. Siddiqui, you do not give up. On the direction of the Supreme Court, I filed these documents in court on the 19th of June 2020. And at its page 4 is a certificate of Standard Chartered Bank which confirms this. Here it is. Um, let me show you. Your husband is now one of the senior most judges of the Supreme Court, uh, the ex Chief Justice of uh, Balochistan High Court. What sort of benefits did he or you uh, get 
by virtue of these posts. Talat sahab, my husband was offered plots, but he did not take even one. He said that he was not entitled to any. Some judges request that they sit in benches in Karachi, Lahore, etc., so that they can attend weddings or to attend to personal affairs and are then paid TNDA. Whenever my husband and I attended a wedding, for instance, Justice Muneeb's daughter's wedding, we did not burden the tax-paying public. We paid our own fare. Okay, so who availed of these uh, benefits and uh, these plots? I do not trace my finger at anyone. I only mention some things merely to point out my husband's financial integrity because of all the lies told about him and to which he cannot respond. Then why did the Commissioner pass an order uh, against you? You should ask the Commissioner. Mr. Zulfikar Ahmed and Mr. Ashfaq Ahmed and those whose bidding they did for Jahad Saab. Now, Mr. Ashfaq Ahmed has been appointed as new chairman of FBR and is reputed to be a person of uh, integrity. How do you uh, uh, interpret that? For Jahad Saab, Mr. Ashfaq Ahmed's integrity I have clearly seen. He dishonestly and illegally changed my ITO from Karachi to Islamabad to access my tax records. I wrote to the FBR on the 27th of January 2020 and again on the 31st January 2020 I wrote to Mr. Ashfaq Ahmed. I would like to read from this letter addressed to Mr. Ashfaq Ahmed dated 31st January 2020. Someone mentioned that it was on your instructions that the RTO was changed because you had received instruction, U per se, to target my husband. I don't know if this is true and look forward to receiving copies of the documents showing why my RTO was changed and who had issued such instructions. And I once again request you to kindly and immediately revert my RTO to Karachi so I can file my return today. Please note the received signature. Till today, he has not replied to my letter. I may add that the Supreme Court on the 3rd February 2020 passed the following order. Let me read from this order. Mrs. Issa addressed to the Director General of International Taxation, FBR complaining about the transfer of her RTO from Karachi to Islamabad. Attorney General dated 30th January 2020, the FBR has redressed her grievance and transferred back her RTO from Islamabad to Karachi. This order was passed by 10 judges, therefore, with respect to the minority judges, a commissioner at Islamabad could not have conducted any inquiries, which was another mistake and which was corrected by the majority when I filed my review. Mr. Ashfaq Ahmed was chosen by Mirza Shahzad Akbar to serve on his illegal asset recovery unit. By the way, what happened to ARU and all the money it collected? Mr. Ashfaq Ahmed did what Mr. Farooq Naseem and Mr. Mirza Shahzad Akbar told him to. Mr. Muhammad Jahan Zaid Khan and Ms. Noshin Javed Amjit, chairpersons of FBR, was distinguished senior bureaucrat. Why were they removed after serving for only a few months? And removed by violating the Supreme Court judgment in the Anita Turab case. Is this not contempt of the Supreme Court? 
All that I'm saying now, I've said it in the Supreme Court. Let me read from my application, number 7602. Mr. Shazad Akbar, as Chairman Assets Recovery Unit, wrote on the 22nd April 2019 to Chairman FBR Mr. Muhammad Janzeb Khan seeking access to confidential records and authorization of proof Mr. Janzeb Khan did not oblige. The consequence, uh, consequence for refusal to comply to PTI PTI's Mirza Shahzad Akbar's demand was Mr. John Zeb Khan's removal, removal after serving as FBR chairman for only eight months. No one has denied this. Are you saying that uh, the law minister uh, and the chairman FBR broke the law? Salim Saab, yes. The law does not mean anything to them. The law minister even tried to bribe lawyers. If law bodies are entitled to receive money, then why was payment made conditional on them first speaking against my husband and me? The law minister took it even a step further by illegally amending Section 216 of the Income Tax Ordinance to protect and benefit himself and his co-conspirators. Firstly, they committed a criminal offence by accessing my tax records. Then they committed another crime by changing the law to benefit themselves, which is a crime under Section 9 of the NAB Ordinance. Uh, Madam, you had written letters uh, to Law Minister uh, Farooq Naseem, uh, to Mirza uh, Shehzad Akbar, and uh, to Anwar Mansoor. Uh, can you share the details of uh, their replies? The law minister and his accomplice, Mr. Shahzad Akbar, issued a press release threatening me with a legal notice. I have not received it yet. Mr. Anwar Mansoor Khan, who always had the courage to speak behind my back, has also not responded. They violated four, four different laws and committed crimes. Let me, let me read this. They violated tax confidentiality, which is a crime under Section 216 of the Income Tax Ordinance. They violated Section 33A of the Banking Company's Ordinance, which guarantees secrecy. Foreign currency accounts have added security. Section 4 of the Protection of Economic Reforms Act says that such account holders, and I quote, enjoy immunity against any inquiry from the Income Tax Department, unquote. This law was also violated and they also changed Section 216 of the Income Tax Ordinance to protect and benefit themselves and in doing so committed a crime under Section 9 of the NAB Ordinance. Why did you not uh, report it to NAB? I did, Salim Saab. Here is my letter. Here is NAB's reply which says that they are looking into it. Will uh, National Accountability Bureau doing anything? You may want to ask them that. But Prime Minister supports his law minister. Imran Saab, undoubtedly he does. And in doing so, the Prime Minister brings his own credibility under a cloud. It seems no one likes a judge who cannot be blackmailed, bullied or bored. First, a Doga missile was launched when it misfired us. Mirza Iftiharuddin rocket was launched. 
And when I went to the police to register an FIR against him for propagating terrorism, he was protected, even though he called for the murder of a Supreme Court judge. I show you my written application for registration of FIR against Mirza Iftikharuddin. It is, it is dated 24 June 2020. This I filed with my review application at page 93. I won't read the whole thing. I'll just read two paragraphs from it. If I may. As you must know, many powerful people are not happy with my husband and I suspect that this death threat to my husband is in continuation of what we have been facing. A complaint was submitted by some Abdul Wahid Dogar against my husband. My husband asked who Abdul Wahid Dogar is, but no one in the government disclosed, nor who Abdul Wahid Dogar worked for. Mr. Shahzad Akbar, who has his office in the Prime Minister's Secretariat, has met with Abdul Wahid Dogar, so please contact him to find out about Abdul Wahid Dogar who is being used by some very powerful people. Please also contact the head of ISI as he must be aware. My father is very seriously ill and today is the first day I have stepped out of the house. I do not want to also lose my husband. Threatening to murder a judge of the Supreme Court of Pakistan is the worst kind of terrorism. Many powerful people want to get rid of my husband and it is your duty to find out who they are and to arrest them. Are you upset because the president on the prime minister's advice filed the uh, reference against your husband? Imran Saab, what do you think? But what I really dislike even more are hypocrites. Mr. Imran Khan bought an apartment in London which he sold for £715,000 in 2003. I and my children bought properties in 2004 and 2013 for roughly the same amount. But unlike Mr. Imran Khan, we did not hide our properties behind an offshore company. If Mr. Imran Khan stood for the principles he professed, then frankly speaking, he should have advised the president to file a reference against himself. What exactly is hypocritical? Election laws, Imran Saab, require any person who contests elections to disclose his properties and those of his wives and children. I, I have never contested an election. Mr. Imran Khan did, but now mine, and my children's properties are well known to everyone. Please do tell me why Mr. Imran Khan does not disclose those of his wives and children. And the money trail, the money trail invented by Justice Khosa. Where is Mr. Imran Khan's money trail of the palatial Banigala residence? Then again, he must be telling the truth that his ex-wife gave him the money Indeed, she is a kind and generous lady, but nonetheless, I wonder why she would firstly pay her ex-husband and then not send the money directly to Mr. Imran Khan's account. Mr. Imran Khan says the money was sent to Mr. Rashid Khan's account and to a bank which no longer exists. How very convenient. And if I may add, for someone shouting the accountability mantra day in and day out. Did Mr. Imran Khan, like me, voluntarily come before the Supreme Court to address all concerns for the sake of accountability? No, he hired a battery of lawyers. Regarding me, the Honorable, Ju Honorable Justice Bandial said in open court that he was fully satisfied which the pressure of work may have made him forget. If you doubt me, please ask the Supreme Court to telecast the recording of my statement 
and what the Honorable Justice Bandiyal said. Very well said, but, uh, but the Commissioner has uh, commented that the low tax returns were not in order. Sahab, of course he will say this and close his eyes to my rental income, agricultural income and profit on my savings certificate. But tell me, what could the poor guy do after all that pressure? In the application which I filed in the Supreme Court on the 19th of June 2020, I also attached property extracts of my agricultural land and savings certificate. This is also part of the public uh, record, the court record, which is open to the public. Please tell me whether Mr. Imran Khan was paying income tax in 1982 when I started paying income tax. Please tell me how many years he paid income tax and how much. Since the world knows about my tax record, why am I not entitled to ask the person pointing the finger at me about his? I don't make allegations sitting on television behind Mr. Imran Khan's back. Mr. Imran Khan was respondent number three in my review application and this is what I wrote in application 7602 at page 43. I'll just read a line from it. Mr. Imran Khan is a tax cheat, did not disclose his three children's assets when they were minors in his return. I would like also to ask the hound Mr. Imran Khan set upon us. The unaccountable accountability czar and his wife to disclose their income tax records and the date when they started filing them. And in the same application, I wrote this about Mirza Shahzad Akbar. If I may read. Mirza Shahzad Akbar is a tax cheat. He does not disclose his wife's property in Spain in his returns. He set up an illegal assets recovery unit and got himself appointed as ARU's chairman. He went to London to negotiate with a property tycoon a deal worth millions. He conspired with Mirza Iftikharuddin in the attempted assassination of Justice Qazi Faiz Isa. These so very honest gentlemen do not, do not deny what I stated in court. FBR protects them because his beneficiary is heading it. The minority judgment has mentioned that uh, Mr. Asen Rizvi paid you 125,000 pounds in 2008 and 2009 and that you had authorized uh, your husband uh, to operate your accounts. Is this correct? Mr. Siddiqui. I do not know who provided this information to the honorable minority judges. My husband was never asked about this. I have also never been asked about it. None of the nine notices FBR sent to me say this. This is also not mentioned in Mr. Zulfikar Ahmed's 164 page order. This reminds me of Justice Khosa's money trail and like it a new insinuation by referring to what they say is in 12 and 14 year old documents which we have not been shown nor asked about but no one the prime minister law minister fbr nab state bank want to know about the proceeds of a crime worth 190 million pounds which the ARU did not find, but a foreign country did. Isn't it a shame what an extraordinary effort has been made by Mr. Imran Khan, Mr. Farooq Naseem and Mirza Shahzad Akbar to conceal the truth from the people of Pakistan? Is this 
what the Holy Quran and its cited verses permit? Should we then be surprised that Pakistan is on the SATF grey list? No one has accused me that my London properties were proceeds of crime. I worked hard my entire life and bought them from my own money. They were not handouts. Mrs. Isa, are you suggesting others have received handouts? I'm not suggesting. I'm saying it. Free plots. Free plots like Mr. Imran Khan. Here I provide you proof of his getting a plot from the government by filing a false affidavit saying that he did not have any property in Lahore. He got another plot in Islamabad. I will read from my application, number 7602. Mr. Imran Khan submitted a false affidavit to obtain a one canal plot for himself in Lahore from the Punjab Chief Minister, Mr. Nawaz Sharif, in 1987, as mentioned in the petitioner's review. Mr. Imran Khan also received a free one canal plot in Islamabad and money from Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif in 1992 on winning the Cricket Cup, World Cup. Did it behove a financially well-off gentleman to take free plots and to deprive the poor, particularly, well, particularly when receiving plots was not backed by any law? In comparison, the petitioner has never received a handout from the government, let alone by submitting a false affidavit, nor did she ever avail of a tax amnesty. This legal document submitted in court has also not been denied. Where is the proof you refer to? Here is his request for a free plot. Here is his signature. I don't, I don't know if the viewers can see it. I will read, if I may. Dear Sir, I am to request you kindly to allot a residential plot to me. I have no house and want to construct one for my own use. Yours truly, Imran Khan. This has been filed in the Supreme Court in my Civil Review Application 298 from pages 57 to 61. And Mr. Imran Khan did not deny this. Mr. Imran Khan then submits an affidavit. I will show you the affidavit. This is his signature. I will just read one portion of it. I Imran Khan, son of Ikramul Khan Yazi, hereby solemnly declare that neither I nor any of my dependents own a residential plot or house or flat at any urban area of Punjab. This is signed by Mr. Imran Khan on the 4th of April 1987. And I now will show you that he did get a plot. This is Chief Minister's Secretariat's letter. I will read it for the benefit of the viewers. This is the letter. Chief Minister has seen the enclosed request from Mr. Imran Khan and has approved the allotment of a one canal plot out of his discretionary quota in Faisal Town Housing Scheme Lahore. Further necessary action may be taken in the matter. It's signed by the Secretary to Chief Minister Naved Essen. I would like you to note that the very same day he gave the affidavit, he got a plot. Mr. Imran Khan did not deny this because he cannot deny this. 
So talking about handouts, these are free handouts and the Islamabad plot which I've already mentioned. I understand that initially uh, this uh, case was pending, it was sub judice, the proceedings, but there was a lot of propaganda against you, vile, vicious propaganda. You didn't agree to give this interview at that time or bring some clarity onto these issues. Why? Why now? Talat Saab, would it have been proper for me to talk about pending cases? Even now, my husband did not want me to give this interview. And so I'm not giving it at home, my husband's official residence. Having said that, I may add that others have no respect for the Supreme Court. The President of Pakistan gave three interviews in the Presidency on the pending reference and on our cases. The Law Minister, Attorney General Anwar Mansur Khan, Mirza Ishazad Akbar and Information Minister continued their false propaganda on television. Femra ignored this. No fine was imposed, no channel suspended. And then, there is the troll army abusing us, all of whom make the same special mistakes. Why are they so afraid of the truth? And perhaps women? Madam, why do you say that they are afraid of the truth and perhaps the fact that you are a woman? Vajad Saab, please do note their misogynist mindset. For example, Mr. Farooq Naseem said in court that I am lucky that when my husband dies, I will get his pension and not have to commit sati. They have a problem accepting an independent, educated working woman. Ms. Noshin Javed Amjit, they did not accept as she was independent and honest. And so she was removed as the chairperson of FBR. They appointed Mr. Javed Ghani for 90 days as chairperson, which period, incidentally, coincided with the time given to FBR. And then there is Mr. Ashfaq Ahmed, whom they are extremely happy with. And Mr. Farooq Naseem, Mr. Anwar Mansoor Khan, Mr. Shahzad Akbar, and the compla complainant, Mr. Dogar, did not have the courage to face me and the truth in the Supreme Court. But does this Nasa Iqbal, uh, a retired justice of Lahore High Court, uh, herself being a woman, she has attacked you uh, quite vehemently. How would you comment on that? Mujahad Saab, I wish she would have picked up the phone and asked me if she had any concerns. This this is very embarrassing for me to say. But she should have first told her son to return the Senate seat given to him by Mr. Imran Khan. This would have shown her to be a principal lady and no one would have then accused her of returning the favor. Mrs. Issa, let me ask you the last question. Are you bitter and angry? I will just show you a little bit of what I and my children were put through. We were subjected to intense surveillance. This is what the government filed in court. All details about my son. All details about my daughter. All details about myself. and my travel history and our photographs taken at the immigration counter at the airports my husband's entire travel history my daughter's entire travel history, 
There is so much material. These were personal, confidential details. Mr. Siddiqui, there is a verse in the Holy Quran, the depth and significance of which after my ordeal, I have now understood. Persecution is worse than death. Thank you very much, Mr. Isa. I would like to thank all of you for the time and trouble you have taken, for the questions asked, and I must admit, some of them were tough. Your professional approach has made it possible for me to share some details of how we have suffered. And for that, I thank you all and the technical crew sincerely. Thank you. Mrs. Uh, Serena Isa ne apne is interview ke andar bahut sari ahem baatein ki hain aur agar koi shakhs ye samajhta hai ki wo unse uh, ikhtilaf karta hai ya unhone durust baat nahi ki hai to hamara platform jo hai wo hazir hai uh, hum aapke muntazir rahenge aur Mrs. Serena Isa ne is interview mein jo uh, sawalat uthaye hain agar koi iska jawab dena chahe to hamara ye platform jo hai wo unke liye hazir hai Abdul Qayyum Siddiqui ko ijazat dijiye Allah ke persecution is worse than death. YouTube पर Google News देखने के लिए YouTube.com की सर्च बार में Google News TV टाइप करें। Google News के पेज पर सुर्ख रंग के सब्सक्रिप्शन वाले बटन पर क्लिक करना ना भूलिए। YouTube पेज पर अपलोड होने वाली वीडियोस से बाखबर रहने के लिए बेल आइकन पर क्लिक कीजिए। आपको हर नई वीडियो के बारे में नोटिफिकेशन मौसूल हो जाएगा।